I think we can all mutually agree that fully developed arms will impact the overall look of a physique. The shape of your arms will either bring a lot of confidence or a lack of confidence to the person you see in the mirror. Unfortunately, many individuals never quite achieve the kind of arm development they are looking for, likely due to shortfalls in training or unknowingly neglecting particular muscle groups. In part 1 of this video, I'm going to go in depth for the best possible exercise routine for the biceps, based on research findings, analysis of several studies, and our understanding of the arms from an anatomical based standpoint. In order to optimize results, let's make sure you first understand the anatomy. As the name implies, the biceps is made up of two heads, consisting of a long head and a short head, and their individual growth will depend specifically on your exercise selection, as you'll learn about in this video. We're also going to look at other muscles surrounding the biceps that are often neglected or forgotten about. Muscles known as the brachialis and brachioradialis, when developed to increase separation and push the bicep heads up for an overall pleasing aesthetic look. The two studies we are first going to be looking at is a 2014 study from ACE and a 2000 study from Boke Barons and Buskies. Now you may be thinking, but Kem, isn't the chin up a back exercise? And the answer is yes, but I also want you to start thinking of the chin up as a biceps development exercise as well. Take a look at what ACE, the American Council of Exercise found in 2014. Take note of the top three exercises. The chin-up is tied for second place here. You're going to want to perform this exercise when your biceps are more fresh, as this is a compound movement which means multiple muscle groups work at the same time, thus taking more effort to properly perform with good form. Before performing this exercise, first make sure your palms are facing your torso with a grip narrower than shoulder width. One way to begin working on this exercise is to use either a chin up assisted machine or grab a strong band. You'll need to tie the strong band around the bar, place one foot through the band, and you'll be on your way. Once you have that down, to drive even more bicep stimulation, start overloading this exercise with a weight belt, chain over your neck, or a dumbbell between your feet. As you may have noticed in the electromyography results of the two studies, the cable curl is a highly performing biceps exercise, and this is exactly why we are going to be utilizing the cable machine for the very next exercise in this routine. Known as the basing cable curl, this exercise will be used to target the long head of your biceps. Both heads will always be active during elbow flexion, but the reason why this targets the long head of your biceps more because your arm is now hyperextended or for simpler terms, behind the body. Think of this as a general rule of thumb when working the long head of your biceps. The arm is placed behind the body in each of these long head emphasized exercises, as you can see here and here. Standing and using cables for this exercise will allow for greater activation through the whole range of motion, which is exactly what we want. To perform this exercise, stand a small distance away from the cable pulley where the long head of the bicep is elongated. Keep the upper arm in the same position and the forearm is moved in the forward and upward direction toward the upper arm. Try to minimize involvement of the anterior deltoid and rhomboid as they are only stabilizers for this exercise and not prime movers. Other muscle groups will quickly help if you're not paying attention to your exercise. Focus on just the biceps at all times. This exercise is absolutely key for eliciting biceps growth, as shown on both this study by ACE and by Boke Barons and Buskies. The concentration curl outpaces all bicep exercises listed, including itself, when focusing on the eccentric portion of the exercise. The two main principles you want to apply are the following. Principle number one, when curling the weight, supinate the wrist. Think of this as turning the weight enough to see the entire edge of your pinky until the dumbbell reaches shoulder level, as this is going to increasingly stimulate the biceps use, as shown in this study by Dr. Andrew and colleagues. Principle number two, 
and most importantly, focusing on the eccentric motion, also known as the negative, to get the most out of this exercise. As noted in this study by Dr. Andrew and colleagues, performing a negative eccentric means that you rise the dumbbell plus 20 to 30 percent heavier than you would normally use. With the help of your free hand, apply just as much force as is necessary, and then lower the weight as slowly as possible using just the trained arm. As noted in this study, the 20 to 30 percent load increase for the negative versus the normal concentration curl improves its already superior muscle activation by a whopping 40 percent. Add in heavy eccentrics only occasionally and not every single biceps workout for the body will need recovery time. This is your ace in the hole and should only be used wisely, as also noted in that study by Dr. Andrew and colleagues. Make sure your protein intake and other recovery practices are being utilized when integrating this highly beneficial but highly taxing training principle. This final exercise is used to target the brachialis and brachioradialis, which lie underneath the biceps and will help push the biceps heads up when developed to improve the overall look and aesthetic of your arm. Their primary function is to flex the elbow joint. In other words, whenever you curl your arm, you are using these muscles. So let's grow them. Taking a look at this study and diagram by Dr. Andrew and colleagues, when the hand is pronated, when performing a curling motion, the involvement of the biceps significantly drops well under any other grip listed, proving that the brachialis and brachioradialis are forced to take on a majority of the load. We will now use this knowledge and perform this exercise with the cable machine, creating the same tension and high EMG activation we would normally be placing on the biceps but has now been shifted to the brachialis and brachioradialis to optimize their growth. If you do not have access to a cable machine, you may switch the basing cable curl for the inclined dumbbell curl and a reverse cable curl to the reverse barbell curl. For the chin-up, perform this as an assisted chin-up and an alternative for the concentration curl will be the Scott curl, which has also been shown to have high EMG activation. Make sure to get full stretches, also known as full range of motion, when performing all exercises listed. The biceps are made up of mostly type 2 muscle fibers which have been shown to best respond to heavier weight. So consider training between six to eight or six to 10 reps with high effort. As listed in this 2018 study by Mass about torque and biceps, have a faster explosive but controlled concentric motion when performing your biceps exercises. This is your last box to check. In conclusion, you want to take all the exercises listed, perform them in the order presented while applying all the pro tips given. Here's a sample routine you can use for your next biceps workout. So to keep it short and sweet, I want you guys to get the best results possible in your training, make lots of progress in your fitness journey, but most importantly, make fitness a lifestyle. I really hope you found this video helpful. And remember, this is just part one of two on how to optimize growth in the arms. I'm gonna be delivering the best information I can get my hands on putting it into quality videos and uploading it right here. Subscribe and turn on notifications because when it comes to fitness, I'm gonna take care of you.